Hey guys, um, gonna focus on, this be a slightly different video, I'll focus on, um, didn't trade too much today, uh, and, but this, I want to make a video on kind of how I avoid certain plays, um, that, you know, especially on a front side like this, like, why in general, like, Nexi or an RVSN, um, in the morning, just, just avoided all the strength, um, but did, we'll go over some of the backside stuff, that was pretty interesting, especially on RVSN, um, but, you know, you know, I want to talk about, like, not getting kind of baited by large gapping percentages, right, there's a lot of shorts who, um, you know, they think their edge is in gapping percentage and, you know, parabolic moves, right, because the, the thinking is, um, you know, a lot of these parabolic moves don't really have any support to sustain themselves, and they just try catching the top, right? Um, and they look at, well, this started from, you know, 5, and now it's at 20, so must be a good short, that type of thing. So, uh, but there's a couple uh, bullish elements to this, uh, both next and RVSN, right? Um, that kind of keep me away from these plays that really it just really turns me off in terms of uh what i don't like about it um it's not just the price point you know a lot of people do avoid higher price point low floats you know once low floats start getting like above ten dollars and there's nothing wrong with that i was actually that way for a long time um and it is a factor that you know especially on some of these grindier choppy names you can get very big spreads, right? You can get sometimes these 30, 40 cent spreads, you know, especially when the volume gets really thin, like down here on RVSN. Sometimes the spread, you know, the, the ask will be at $20.30 and the bid's at nineteen eighty or something like that. And it's like, um, it's just like, how do you control risk and how do you enter on a play like that, right? So, um, but that's like not even the main element, you know, it's like, what? You know, I always say that uh, the best longs always have a reason to run, right? There's always some reason, and that reason could be a lot of different things, right? Uh, you know, the reason a lot of people think stocks run is because of some catalyst, right? But overall, in low floats, um, catalysts and news and PR mean almost nothing. Uh, now, catalyst could be great when it's a, when it's a real company, like you know these good news biotech plays on these thicker floats and um, meaningful news with meaningful, you know, collaborations and, 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 and milestone payments and getting money and, you know, and, and positive uh, biotech news. You know, I mean, there's there are catalysts that exist, uh, but often in low floats, it's, it's you know, something like RVSN, um, there's a there's definitely a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we could see the pump 1 to 23. Um, I would say in general, first of all, shorting multi-day runners, like, you know, shorting multi-day runners on, like, this day or this day or, th like, multi-day runners in general are just extremely difficult stocks to short on extension because you never know who's buying this, who's supporting the stock, why it's being supported, this way, you know, most low floats, if it went from one to nine, you know, it's it's usually done. So if it starts going in multi-day runner mode, and um, you know, I outside of this, you know, this day where I took losses going short, you know, I haven't traded RVSN once, mostly because of um, the fact that it was on this extremely just grindy, choppy, spready relatively thin multi-day runner right um you know when things get really choppy and grindy with lower volume i consider that to be bullish you know in my discord i call it thin grindy bs <laughs> I, I always try to tell my discord not to short thin grindy bs um because you know a lot of times you'll come to key support levels like this right and the volume gets really 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 low and there's just no further selling and a lot of times you can get um, very, you know, uh, all all the selling gets soaked and you get big rotations and you get squeezed. Um, so, I, you know, I don't like it when a stock is, you know, trading 
up here above VWAP, and then suddenly it's trading, you know, 50k shares a minute, 40k shares a minute, like, um, you know, I, I always hate when things get a lot thinner like that. Uh, and then, you know, we, we start getting it again. Um, and then, you know, RVSN was pulling out every single short trap in the book. Like, for, look at this right here. This was... I actually felt really dumb for passing on this because people in my room pointed out, like, look how painted these lower highs are. And then when this candle happened, I felt really dumb. But then... Uh, you know, a lot of, it, then it went, it, look at, look how low the volume got. Like this, it, it, this is a big long trap candle. It should be fading. It goes right back to being thin grindy. Like these are 2K volume candles, 2K, 2K, 2K. And they just, you know, they just rigged it. And look at where it went. Went all the way to 23 and this was down at 14. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, on one hand, I felt so dumb for missing this. On the other hand, like it ended up squeezing and I'm like, oh, well, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of the thin grindy soaky, you know, you can see it here too. Um, this like choppy, thinner volume soaky action down here um, was why I didn't even want to reserve share. It also helps that the shares of the stock were really expensive. Um, and, you know, I just end up calling these headache shorts. I'm like, man, these are headache shorts, man. By the way, uh, high day clear out short trap again. Look at this. High day clear out. And I always love the second bounce. Here's the first. Here's support right at VWAP. Second bounce. Uh, some people in my room hit this rotation in the low 20s right here. All right. And you can catch, of course, the more extended a stock gets, um, a lot of times the less continuation there is above the high day break. So. You know, this stock started from one dollars and it's at twenty two. You know, it's uh this is a nice short trap pattern, but it's really unless you get constant bid support on the book, it's really hard to have faith in um a lot of continuation past high day. And a lot of times when it starts to knife, like you start to get these candles or these candles, like you just have to get out because you just never know where top's gonna be. Um I did want to show the book on this play. This, this is something I've been tracking on the book. Again, we got these, we got some painted, like I said, midday stocks. You often have to, you have to be really patient, right? The, the liquidity move, like look at this, high day is 1014. This liquidity move is 1134. That's almost an hour and a half after high day that the, the best short signal with the best book comes. And that's because, um, you know, especially thinner volume plays, you, you have to be really patient. Like, like look at, look at how aggressive this selling is. This ends up being the low for a full hour, right? You can't have FOMO and chase dump candles like this, right? Um, you know, a lot of people want to, you know, they see the first high day pullback and they want to short the first bounce that they see. And most of the times, you know, it would have worked out here, you know, but a lot of times, um, the best short comes later, right? You want it, you want it midday. You want to see what the structure is. Um, well, let's go to RVSN on this backside. Well, first let's go to the Heidi clear out short trap. It's just, it's like the same book we've always seen. on Heidi clear out short traps. Here's Heidi clear out. Here's the first bid and here's the first bottom. But a lot of times what happens, the reason you want to wait for the second test of support is because most of the time, the first bounce has a lack of bids on it, right? Um, you really want to, and then it's, it's very common for them to sell into the lack of bids on the first bounce, right? So it also lures in shorts um, with the, you know, the supposed weakness. But the other reason you want to wait for at least the second bounce is um, you want to see what, a, are there new bids showing up? And B, how is the stock acting around those bids, right? Um, you know, people in my room were, the moment they saw this high day clear out, there's multiple people in the room that was like, is this just going to be another high day clear out short trap? And I was like, it's highly likely that it is. Um, RVSN, really not the type of ticker to give an obvious pattern into a 40% fade. You know, the backside pattern it did give, you know, here's that, Here's that uh, that long trap. Is the first thing you want to see 
we, and we, see, we saw this over and over again over the past week. Um, a lot of these backside clearouts, we'll see if that there's minimal bid support. Um, and sometimes there is bid support lower. Um, but what's important on these, if, if your thesis is this push is going to be a long trap, right? Uh, what's very important is, A, uh, are there bids following this up? And there aren't. They actually, they actually spooked a little uh, 50,000 share bid right here, and they pulled it. Um, but there's uh, overall, there's no bids following this up. And the thing we've been seeing on backside clearouts, these, these painted, these, these, these kind of painted, you know, backside pushes, because this is, I mean, you don't know for sure, but this is potential backside. Clearer, uh, lower highs being painted is a lot of times what they do is they stack a bunch of ass. And on the backs, on this, like, manipulated backside clear out, they, f they actually fill the ass. So, like, they fill the ones down here. And, of course, you're really paying attention. It's like, okay, which ass are below high day, right? You're, I was, you know, I was looking at these 23 guys. And look, they filled this whole guy. They filled most of this guy. And then there's no bid support, and then they pull it, right? So painted backside, the way it works is painted backside. You know, aggressive initiation, a lack of bid follow-up, right? And then filling the ask, right? And then once these asks, these guys, these market makers fill their orders, they dump it, right? And this ends up being the you know beginning of a massive, massive, massive dump. So, um, Nexi, is there was there anything crazy interesting about Nexi um, in terms of the book? Nexi was also one of those plays where um, you know Nexi is getting delisted, right? So the company's ceasing operations, and they are. Um, uh, you know, they're going to get delisted, the, the stock's going to go to the OTC, and, um, you know, it's going to be trading on, you know, a, a year from now, it's going to be trading for one cent a share. The thing about all that is if everyone, especially on these, like, crazy manipulated low floats, is that um, if everyone knows that information, if everyone knows it's going to be delisted, right, and everyone knows it's going to be liquidated, right, then everyone's thinking the same thing. Everyone is super bearish the stock, and everyone is thinking the thing's going to zero. And if everyone has the same idea and knows the same information, then in low float land, that makes it a great candidate. You know, this is why bankruptcy stocks go from five cents a share to fifty cents a share. You know, this is why this happens, right? Because everyone's thinking that everyone knows. Company's going bigger up. It's getting the list. Everyone's thinking the same thing. You know, we saw we remember we from uh, earlier in the year. Can't even pull it up right now because <laughs> uh, but um, I think the ticker symbol changed. But um, when everyone thinks is thinking the same thing and is positioned the same way in low the land, these these uh these tickers get really. Really, really, you know, these riggers come in and they just squeeze everybody. They're so smart. So, you know, Nexi has that factor that the delisting pump is a bullish factor because of how everyone's positioned on the play. Um, and yeah, I mean, this was actually, this was nice. It's like, look, look at this. This is high day, 11, 18 a.m. This is 1.23, just two hours later. Takes out these lower, a few of these lower highs. Starts to struggle, and that's the uh, beginning of the you know the dump. Um, but yeah, I mean, but I I heard I saw that this was the listing pump, and I'm like, I'm not shorting this. <laughs> I'm not shorting this. this is a, a multi-day runner de listing pump. I'm like, this is, uh, you know, these are bullish factors. The multi-day runner is a bullish factor. The de listing pump, and the fact that everyone's position positioned the same way is a bullish factor. Um, and I just made the decision, I'm like, you know, for both RVSN and for this, even though they eventually give nice backside plays, um, we, but of course a lot of that comes after two, three, four, five, six short squeezes, right? <laughs> so you gotta be extremely good at avoiding every single short squeeze on the way up and hit the perfect backside short and be patient enough to wait for the signal, right? It's, it's easier said than done. Um, 
But yeah, here's that that up halt near 20. We get the classic bullish price action, right? You get you quick pull back to support, right? Here's high day. Here's straight straight down from 21 to 17, straight down to the 1 minute 20. 17 becomes 17.5 becomes support. Um, and like I said, the, the, the usually, you know, in the morning moves can be really aggressive. But then the later and later you get, usually the longer it takes, right? Usually instead of, you know, 10 minutes to make a new high, you start to get 20, 30, 40 minutes to make a new high, right? Um, so that's why in both the long and the short, you often have to be patient, right? And you'll tell, you can actually take, if you're trying to long this, say your thesis is, I think next year is just going to keep squeezing shorts and all these people swinging the stock. Um, you know, if, if you're planning on longing this, what you really need to wait for is you need to wait for consolidation. Because you can actually see retail kind of chasing too early. Oh, you can't see this. Like on these, so here's the pullback to 17.5. A lot of these pushes have no bid support, right? That's why you get dumps like this, right? A lot of retail will chase, you know, 19 point, you know, 19 or 19.5, and then it dumps back down to 17.5, back to where support is, right? Um, and really the best longs always come after, A, a significant period, of, you know, especially midday, you know, you know, significant period of consolidation and, um, and, you know, consolidation where bids are joining the party, right? We, we see this on Mark. Mark had an amazing, Mark's had some amazing, this has been an amazing penny runner. But here's another example. Here's Mark pushed, this was when Mark was at 80 cents, high day was at 80 cents. Quick pullback. So they dumped it super quick. They bounced it with no bids, dumped it again, and then the bid. So when the bids show up after, um, you know, a, a long enough consolidation, then the stock can move, right? Um, but, yeah, going back to Nexi, man, this thing is, uh, Mark is, <laughs> dude, look at all those Mark shorts trying to short $1 and it just squeezes them 20%. I love the people who just pile in short $1 on a parabolic stock just because they think that's going to be resistance. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this was the same thing, right? You, you know, a lot of these, um, a lot of these bullish-looking bounces. You know, after you get a controlled walk down and you get a, a nice big aggressive move, there's no bids, and then the bids actually start to come in, right? And you can long here, and then you get a pullback, and then more bids start to come, and that's what leads to, you know, leads to the push. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make that video about Nexin RBSN. Um, obviously, they eventually gave, they both gave backside patterns. Um, usually, one to two hours after high day has already come in um, with big fades. Uh, but you know, I wanted I wanted to talk about some of the factors that, you know, why I was avoiding this. You know, I, I didn't trade Nexi or RBSN. I didn't trade Nexi yesterday. I didn't trade it today. Short. Um, didn't trade RVSN past three, four days short, um, just because I think they're headache. I, I just call them headache shorts, right? Um, you know, if anything, the, you know, these were, the, a lot of these were clean longs, especially like the Heidi Cloud short trap pattern we've seen over and over again work. So um, anyway, guys, that is just the video for today. Information down below about the Discord. I was pretty much warning people that I wasn't really interested in trading this. Um, and But I was watching it. I always watch it. Should have longed this. Um, by the way, if you're, if you're curious, the only long I actually took was I actually longed this. Because I thought this this isn't really a low flow, you know, low flow shitter, as I say. Um, I actually thought this might have a lot of continuation. And... I long this here. I sold some here because there was zero bid follow up on this push. And it actually ended up turning into an amazing short pattern. This is actually a fake five minute flag. I just thought this had the fundamentals and the news to keep pushing. I thought this was a nice walk down. You know, here's your big high day push. Nice controlled walk down. 
nice consolidation. There were a ton of bids down here supporting the stock. There wasn't that many ask. It did this big aggressive move, but there's no bid follow up on this, and they ended up just selling it, and it went and it went down. So made a little bit because I sold some, you know, sold some in the you know high two point threes and got out on the knife, because um, I just thought it was really really uh, bearish, and then. Um, and then, yeah, that was really all I did. I, I kind of messed up the market open long. Some people in my room hit this on this consolidate. This was actually a really nice market open long. Um, but anyways, that's the video for today. Have a good one, guys. See ya.